Um, the second item, which we'll call a menace or a synonym, we can call it a threat. <clears throat> so a menace is a card that is not, it's not a winner right now, but it could become one. It's a card that could be promoted into a winner. And you'll see this more clearly when we get into our, our hand diagram. Um, you know, it may not be a winner right now, but it can become one once your opponent makes the costly discard that they have to make. Um, so, um, and, and if you want, you can look at uh, the, the hand diagram that's on the, uh, that's on the hand out there where we've come down to just the, the three card ending on a hand. So, you know, 10 tricks were pre played previously and we eventually arrived at this squeeze position. Um, so in this case, um, so dummy, dummy has um, the ace jack of spades. This is the, the north hand on the diagram and the king of hearts. So, the spade suit, we refer to as a two-card menace, right? Notice in the diagram that West has the king-queen of spades. So in theory, only the ace is a winner there, right? But the jack is a threat. Why? Because if left-hand opponent discards one spade, now the ace and jack become winners, right? Because the ace will drop the other spade on it, and suddenly the jack is promoted. So that's referred to as a two-card miss. On this same hand diagram, the king of hearts is a one-card miss. <laughs> There's only one card in the suit. And right now, at this very moment, it is not a winner. But if this opponent, seeing the ace, jack of spades, said, oh, I gotta hang on to my king, queen of spades to make sure that dummy doesn't have two spade winners. Well, if in that process, they discard the ace of hearts instead, what happens? King is promoted to a winner, right? So that's what, you know, when we talk about a threat or a menace and we use those um, terms interchangeably, um, so, and the key to this, to having a card being a menace, what if this second card in the spade suit isn't the jack? What if it's the five? Is it a menace? On this hand, no, right? Because East has the seventh of spades, right? So in that case, it, it would not it would not work, right? What scenario would he discard the ace? Well, he's going to leave the. Mm. Well, so so in the in the hand diagram here, when we come down to this three card ending, and assuming that the lead is in the south, what's going to happen? And the squeeze card on this hand diagram is the ace of clubs, right? Oh, okay. And so that is where the pressure is applied, right? What do you do? You have these three cards, and your and your right hand opponent plays a club winner. What do you do? Well, the answer is you're screwed, <laughs> basically, right? Mm -hmm. So you, whether you pitch the ace of hearts or you unguard the spade and keep only one of your spades, you have not made a defensive error. You have been forced into this position. So that you know that that's that's the key here. The other thing to keep in mind also um, about your menace is that the menace must lie over the cards that would get it promoted. In other words, if we simply flip the east and west hands on this hand diagram such that east has the king, queen of spades and the ace of hearts left, does the squeeze work? No. Why won't it work? Because when you play your ace of clubs, and, and if left-hand opponent's hand is irrelevant, 
if they have nothing but little cards that aren't ever going to be winners, well, they just pitch whatever. They throw their X, and now you have to make a decision, right, and pitch something from the dummy. Well, if you pitch the king of hearts, as long as Ace is paying attention, they should then throw their ace of hearts, right? Once the threat goes away from the dummy, you might as well release your ace of hearts and protect your spade, right? On the other hand, if Declare throws away the jack of spades, now you go ahead and pitch one of your spades because you'll get a heart winner at the end, you won't get a spade win. So, so that, that's the other part of it, is that the location of those threats does matter. We'll give you the other two items here, and then uh, and then we will break for a little bit. Um, entries, or entry, anyhow, singular. For those menaces to mean anything, you've got to be able to get to the dummy, right? South, if the lead is in your hand, where your squeeze card is. You've also got to be able to get to the board. So notice that in South's hand, if the four of hearts was instead the four of diamonds, would the squeeze still work? Yeah, the four of hearts ends up being irrelevant. On the other hand, if the two of spades is the two of diamonds, do you have an entry to the board? No, you don't. Well, a menace is only useful if you can actually get to it to cash it, right? So... <laughs> So that, that shows you, so, so, you need, you, so that's why you need, yeah, there are multiple things that you need here for the squeeze to work. So in addition to having those cards that are threats to be promoted into winners, you've also got to be able to get to them. If your opponent doesn't throw away the ace of hearts, the king of hearts is never an entry, right? If you don't have a spade in your hand, you can't get to the dummy. So that's the issue you run into. And you can probably see, you know, needing all these conditions. It's a lot of times you have a squeeze position and you can set it up. And this used to happen to me early on. I would recognize that I had a squeeze, but I would mess up my entries <laughs> I would, or something like that. And I'd be like, oh, I had this going the right way. And then I, you know, and then I, then I botched it. Um, the fourth item is timing. Um, and what do we mean by the timing? So for a squeeze to work, you must come down to a position where you have exactly one loser remaining. And so in this three card ending that's on the handout, that is the situation, right? With three tricks left to go, you have the ace of clubs as a sure winner, you have the ace of spades and dummy that you can get to as a sure winner. And then it's the third trick that is a loser, right? So during the play of the hand, if you think you are going to be executing a squeeze, what you have to do is bring yourself down to exactly one loser. Squeezes don't work when there are two or more losers. And to give you an example, look at that three card ending and envision the four card ending where we put one more diamond in every hand. So give, every, give, give all four players at the table a small diamond. Now there are four tricks remaining, but North South only have two sure winners and there are two losers, right? The squeeze will not work at that point, right? Because when if South, if you play your ace of clubs, both of your opponents discard a meaningless diamond, right? And they, are, they have not been squeezed. Have any of you ever heard the term rectifying the count? No. You have now. <laughs> you want, you, 
<clears throat> you want to impress some big shots? Tell them, tell them that you played a hand where you had a squeeze and tell them about how you rectified the count at trick nine or something like that. <laughs> and they will bow before you and know that you are spectacular bridge players. Um, yeah, it's not, it's, uh, rectifying the count basically means taking yourself down to one loser. So if you anticipate a squeeze, actually sometimes you end up losing a trick. And again, this is a trick you always have to lose, right? We're not talking about conceding a trick that you shouldn't lose, right? We're talking about conceding a trick that you always have to lose anyhow. So a lot of times you end up doing that earlier on, on the hand. You have to, you know, you, that, that, is, that is rectifying the count. Um, is it alertable? Oh. <laughs> 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 um, you can also call it when when you do that. If you're uh, if you're talking to somebody from the UK, you can tell them that you are adjusting the duke, because that is the Scottish uh, slang term apparently for uh, for rectifying the count. So, <laughs> so, um, so those are the four pieces you need. You need a squeeze card. You need a menace or multiple menaces. Um, you need an entry to get to the cards uh, that might become winners. Um, and then you need the timing of having come down to one loser. So those are the conditions for a squeeze to work. And why don't we go ahead and break now and then we will uh, uh, look at some more diagrams and 